In this exercise, we're going to create a network logo to identify the broadcast station. It's called a bug, sometimes also called a jelly or a glass. Now, you can use any artwork for this or even any text. So what I've already done is I've created the graphic and we'll just bring it in and then we'll modify it. It's also good when you're creating a bug like this to have some kind of background image, maybe some kind of screen grab from actual footage that you'll be working with so you can see how your bug will look when it's layered on top of that video file. First we're going to go to our file menu and place some things. We will grab a file called frame grab first and that will drop in a background image that we can use to place our bug on top of and then we're going to drop in in the same method our artwork there we go. We want to use the one called Spy Logo. When you drop in artwork like this, your artwork will sometimes come in as regular object or in this case as a smart object. So you can scale it, hold down your shift key to constrain, and when you have it the size that you want it, you would hit enter. Then you'll notice that it becomes a smart object in your layers panel. You'll see that little box over in the corner of the thumbnail. Then you can drag that artwork into position. Now I have already run the title safe overlay so I know exactly where to place my artwork but I still say that that's a little bit large for a bug. Just command or control T to scale it down like so. Remember to hold down your shift key. Now sometimes your employers will tell you it has to be a certain width or a certain height so you would go by whatever specifications that they gave you. I'm just going to make it 100% width. If you can't see your artwork on top of the frame grab, you could select the frame grab and reduce the opacity. Maybe not that much, something like that, because the frame grab is really just there to assist you. Now, with that text selected, that logo selected, you'd probably want to do a few things to make it stand out. And one of the nicknames I mentioned is called glass, and that's because it looks like the artwork or text, whatever it is, but it's see-through. In order to give it that see-through effect, we've got to do a couple of special things. And we'll start by giving it some special effects. You could add, depending on your artwork, a drop shadow. You could do bevel and emboss. You can do color overlay. But for us, we're going to do two things. We're going to do an outer glow and a bevel and emboss. So with our outer glow, let's move this off to the side. We just want a slight halo going around this. So I'm going to probably reduce the opacity to about 20% and reduce the size to something really small like one. And then we'll add the bevel and emboss here. But again, I want to keep it really subtle. So I'm going to bring the size down to zero and keep the soften at zero. And everything else can stay the same. All these default settings are great for exactly what I'm looking for. And then you will reduce the fill from 100% to zero. And what this does is it allows you to use those special effects but not see the actual color of the object on the layer. So now if we go back to our frame grab and put the opacity back up at 100%, you can see, and let's uh, hide our guides and we'll hide the title overlay, you can see that it looks really great. It's nice and easy to read. The next step in the process is to create an alpha channel. Before you send this to an output monitor, you need to make an alpha channel to mask everything except your bug, and this will improve the quality of the bug when it's sitting on top of moving video. To create the alpha channel, you'll want to hide everything except for your bug layer, and then hold down your command or control key and select the contents of that layer. And even though we can barely see it against this transparency, we are getting a nice smooth outline around this logo shape. We can then come into our channels panel and click this button here. It says save selection as channel. If you click on that button, it will save that selection as an alpha. Go back to your Layers panel, and you can deselect with the Command or Control D. And now you can save this file as a PSD. Then, before you send it out, you would save a copy. Remember, to make a duplicate, you go to your Image Duplicate option, click OK. Now you can save this copy as a picked Targa or a ping file. A Ping 24 would be used for Final Cut Pro or Avid. In Premiere Pro, you can import a PSD file, so you wouldn't even need to make a copy of it. The reason you'd want to keep your original as a PSD file with all of the layers is so that you could go back in and make modifications in case you ever need to do that. Also, it's nice to have an archive of your work. 
just going forward, you can always refer back to it if you need to. And also, if you're using this example for Avid, make sure that you invert your alpha channel within your import settings. After you've saved the file, then you can import the file into your NLE or into After Effects, but be sure to tell the program that the bug is pre-multiplied with white to get the cleanest edge. You could do the same bug glass technique, as I said, with any text or any graphic. All you need to do is bring in the artwork or add the type on a new layer and apply the same effect. If you want to copy an effect from one layer to the other, just go here, right click on the layer, choose Copy Layer Style, then go up to the new layer and you'll choose Paste Layer Style. So once you have a style that's working for you, you can always copy and paste it onto any new artwork.